right. All right. I want to, I want to uh, welcome everyone to our Portage County Safety Council meeting. Um, it's been about a month since I've been here, so I'm excited to be back. We were working on some special projects, um, but we're back here at the meeting, and I'm excited to uh, at least virtually be able to meet with all of you. Um, we have a great presentation today talking about stress. I think, uh, as we can see from our opening clip, we could all use uh, some decompression, and uh, it's definitely um, a different environment we're working in. And maybe, there we go. I have some uh, updates here from the Ohio BWC. Um, we are still offering virtual safety consulting and virtual training for our customers. So if you have any questions or concerns related to safety and health programs in your organization, please let us know. Um, right now we have no in-person classes uh, scheduled through the Ohio BWC Training Center until next policy year, which would be July 1 of 2021. However, we are offering virtual training now um, when those classes are up and running with our vendors and our in-house training staff. So please check out the BWCLearningCenter.com where you can enroll in those classes. Um, really good feedback we've gotten over the past several months since we started the virtual training. As usual, if you have any questions, need some more updated information re related to the coronavirus, you can find that at coronavirus.ohio.gov. Um, we talked about this before, the BWC approved our third dividend payments to be payable in December. I just talked with our business consultant um, yesterday and they've started to release those checks. So they should be coming out this week and next week. I know companies um, are looking forward to that funding. Um, so those checks should be headed your way. If you have questions related to that, please let me know after the meeting and I can get you in contact with your business consultant um, and they can let you know uh, the amount that you'll be receiving back. Um, and then an anticipated delivery date. But it sounds like all of those will be coming out in the next two weeks. Um, I wanted to talk about some new releases from the Ohio BWC too. Uh, during the COVID, since we've been virtually working, we've taken on several projects and two of those projects are a major revision of our written safety and health program templates and our safety and health talks. Um, so this is just a screenshot, but I thought instead of that, what I would do is I'm actually going to share with you um, the website. Um, and I will give a link to this to Mike so he can send it out to everyone. But our website here, um, we have a safety talk section down here and written safety program templates. And I'm gonna click on these templates real quick. And right now um, we're in the process of we'll have many more of these coming. These are the first five safety programs that we have developed, written, um, vetted through our professionals and had looked at, and these are available to you at no cost. So you can download these written safety and health program templates, um, adapt them to your company's needs, uh, and we as consultants can help you with that process too, but you can get these now for free on our website. Um, so we will have a standardized product that we will be giving to all of our customers here in the state of Ohio. Additionally, I get a lot of requests for safety talks. Um, a lot of our safety talks were outdated on our website. These now on this website are all updated. We had a team of about 20 professionals um, going through these, rewriting these, updating the standards, and these are all available at no cost. So for example, here's a driving one. Um, as you can see, we have a, it's, it's set up so that you can give a good uh, five to 15 minute presentation on this with research material. Um, and then links to additional information to help you. And we've included group activities in all of these too. So these are really, really good uh, safety toolbox talks that you can get from us off our website at no cost. And there's gonna be plenty more of these coming. Um, we're gonna be releasing those over the next several months. So those are some of the big updates that are happening here at the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. Um, if you have any questions as usual, let me know after the meeting um, and we can talk, we can set up an appointment and we can help you out with any of your safety and health needs. Um, we have a sponsor today for our meeting, and I'm going to turn the meeting over to our sponsor, which is Deb O'Connell. I think many of us know her. She's on our steering committee um, and does a great job uh, both here on the committee and in the state of Ohio helping with workers' compensation programs. The floor is yours, Debbie. Thanks, Thanks Nick. So, hello, everyone. Um, for those of you that may or may not know, I am from 1888OhioComp. So, being the sponsor today, I decided since you guys uh, listen to me all the time that I thought we would do something maybe a little fun a little different so what I'm going to do is I am going to pose uh, three questions 
And what you need to do is um, you need to, if you know the answer, respond to the question in the Q&A portion. And um, the first person that answers each question, yes, yep, type in the q and A. I'm sorry, I see Renee's uh, message pop up there. So you're gonna type the answer to the question in the Q&A. Renee will let us know who responded first. And um, if you respond first, I will send to you in the mail um, a gift card. So um, at the end of the, the slides is going to be my email address for those of you that don't have it. And so whoever Renee says is the winner needs to email me your address that you want it sent to. So I know some of you are working from home, but I thought again, this would be something a little fun. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this because this is my first time sharing on the screen here. Okay, so when we're not till Renee, not till I say go is when we will start getting the answers in. The first question is, what service does my company provide? So Renee will let us know who the first responder is and we can say if it is correct. Well, the first answer, there? the first answer was wisdom from Mike Lenzo. Mike, yeah. thank you. That's Debbie <laughs> is certainly full of insight and wisdom, but that's the wrong answer. Ah, uh, that was so nice. You should yeah. send him a gift card anyways, I think. I know, right? I, I, you know what? <laughs> I might have to because that was so good. All right, Renee, who, do we have the next? Yep. Missy Green was the first. Okay. okay so like, oh, and Missy. Let me, yeah. uh, hold on. Let's see. How do I dismiss these? Okay. So the correct answer, Debbie, are you going to give the correct answer so everybody knows? Well, let's see. Let's see. Do you want to, do you want to say what the first person said and I could say if that's right? Yeah. So Missy Green said MCO. Correct. So that acronym stands for managed care organization. So our company does medical management of workers' comp claims. Missy, watch for my email address on the third or the fourth slide so that you can send me where you would like that to go to. Congratulations. All right, I'm gonna hit the next button and once once the question is read, then you can start responding. And Mike, and make thank sure you, you go for to the, nice and the chat box. The chat box is yes. uh, lots of people chatting. So make sure you go to the... Yep, Q&A. All right, we ready? Okay. And this one, I think, oh, what happened here? Of course, it's not going. Oh, this one, I apologize, is a little off the screen. How much does our company, 188 Ohio Comp, charge an employer for their services? The hint is all MCOs charge the same thing. All right. We should start getting, so I think we have some answers coming in, Renee. Yep, I got uh I have the first person that's on the list here is Charles Jones said nothing. That's from Absolutely Cardo. correct. <laughs> we actually we actually get paid very good, Parda. We actually get paid through the premiums that employers pay to the bureau. So you never see a bill from us, so you pay us nothing directly. So good job. Um, again, watch for my email address at the end. All right, the last question I have here if I can get to that again let's see I had a bunch of all right typically in what month is open enrollment every other year go ahead my first response was from Stacy Friedman she said September mm, Karen oh I'm sorry said May all right, that's the correct answer. Well, Who is that from me? Karen Bosley. Aurora Chamber of Very Commerce. Very good. Yeah. Great. So what happens is every other year in the month of May, it's always four weeks. Sometimes it starts in April, but usually the month of May is going to be the open enrollment period for MCOs. Typically on the even year, um, because of uh, the COVID, it got moved to 2021, but I'm not sure if that will take place. We may, it may even be pushed uh, to a different time. So I want to thank everyone for participating and I'm going 
me to put up this slide that's going to show my email address. So those three that won, you need to send me your mailing address name and mailing address so that I get it to the right place. I'm going to send those out in the mail tomorrow. So they're going to come from 888 Ohio Comp logo will be in the left corner. But I want to really wish everyone a happy holiday. I'm so glad that everyone was able to join us. Um, I really miss seeing everybody. I look so forward to next year. So cheers to 2020. It's going to be a great year for all of us. Um, with that being said, I'm done. But I am going to introduce our speaker today. And let me stop sharing here so that she can get set. Okay. So today our topic is stress, learning today for a better tomorrow. Kristen Dickerson is the statewide manager for health, wellness, and special programs for the Ohio BWC. She has worked in both the private and public sector at all levels of the government and within hospitals. She has obtained a bachelor's in microbiology with a P, I'm sorry, MPH and PhD in epidemiology, as well as being a registered nurse and certified lab technician. In addition to working with the biowarfare in the Army and serving in the public health service, she has been a regional infectious disease epidemiologist, infection preventionist, quality improvement coordinator for the prison system in Ohio, and a program administrator for population health programs, in addition to being a visiting professor and subject matter expert for Chamberlain School of Nursing. So welcome, Kristen, and I'll turn it over to you. Thanks for having me again. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my video because it makes it easier to share my screen because I actually don't like to watch myself present. So give me one second. Okay, I just want confirmation that you guys can see the screen. Okay, good. Uh, sorry. not there okay um, so we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about stress today I don't know about anybody else but I I feel like I'm busier now and doing more than I did before the pandemic and it seems like everything is just a little harder to do it's harder to get groceries it's harder to figure out where to get where to go to eat you have to wear a mask you have to remember the mask you have to make sure that you're that your kids are virtually learning or doing what they're supposed to do if they get quarantined. Like life is just a lot more difficult. And we're going into the holly season and that makes um, life even more stressful because we've got changes that might have to occur. Um, but there's actually a lot of physical impacts that stress can have on your body. So today we're gonna to go over, talk a little bit about the current situation um, why it might be impacting us now more than um, it did, types of stress, uh, symptoms of stress. Um, we're going to go over a uh, little bit about how to manage stress, and I'll try to give you a toolkit. We're also going to talk about mindfulness, and I will give you a little bit of health and wellness tips as well as teleworking tips um, to, make, to make it a little more healthier for you. I know that I'm still teleworking and um, a lot of these presentations are still virtual. So um, if you're still teleworking, these tips could possibly help you. Okay, so a little bit about the current situation. Everybody knows that we're in a pandemic unless you've been hiding under a rock for the last nine months. We have been living in this state of change um, for nine months. Um, at the beginning of this, it probably was easier because we were um, we were drawing on our reserves and our adrenaline, so it was easier to deal with things and it was easier to handle things. As time goes on, that adrenaline, and we're gonna look at the stress curve and it kind of shows how you can end up exhausting your resources. Um, but as time goes on and we're still in this, this state of change, the state state of unknowing and of everything being impacted, we start to exhaust ourselves because we are continually drawing on resources and our resources are dwindling. Um, the pandemic has changed every um, 
part of our lives. Our kids are, our kids may be virtually learning. They're impacted. Sports has been impacted. The economy has been impacted. Transportation and travel, entertainment, everything's been impacted. Um, because the basic infrastructure of the United States has been impacted, the CDC has declared the pandemic as a disaster. So when the CDC de declares something a disaster, think about how hurricanes are a disaster or wildfires are a disaster. People are impacted at, at the basic level um, of safety, of finance, everything's impacted. Um, when we have things that are classified as a disaster, this can actually create trauma and uh, chronic stress in individuals. So the pandemic has been noted to be a uh, traumatic event. Um, one other thing that we might be living with um, in terms of the pandemic is we might have people that have been ill with COVID. Uh, COVID might have affected us. Or just in the back of our minds, there's always that Am I sick? Am I making others sick? Um, so these are all things that are impacting us. We talked about a lot of the changes um, that we are going through right now. One of the biggest changes though is how we interact with people. We are social creatures. We like to interact with people. We like to talk with people. We like to like hug, high five, get together and associate. And this has really impacted uh, humans being social creatures and it can cause anxiety stress depression there's a lot of mental health impacts that they're starting to study in terms of the pandemic because as this goes on it's not just affecting our physical health but our mental health as well so we should probably just define stress a little bit um Stress is a feeling of emotional or physical tension. It can come from any event or thought that makes you feel frustrated, angry, or nervous. Stress is your body's reaction to a challenge or a demand, such as when it helps you avoid danger or a deadline. Your, your stress can be positive, um, but it can also be negative, especially if it turns into chronic stress. Uh, there are two types of stress, and we're going to go into them in more detail, uh, acute stress and chronic. Um, for definition, a stressor is just something that causes stress. Anxiety is when we continue to have stress after the stressor has been removed. So if we get stressed when we go to Walmart, but we walk out of Walmart and we still feel stress, we've removed the stressor, but we still have stress. So that's so that's anxiety from going to Walmart. And personally, sometimes I get that. So when we talk about stress, it is, it is a physical and a mental reaction in your body. Um, I'm going to give you a scenario and it will kind of help you relate to some of the physical changes that can occur in your body because of stress. So we're driving down the highway, we're speeding a little bit, all of a sudden we see a cop. I don't know about you, but when I see that cop, my heart starts to race. My, I can feel my blood pressure go up. I flush in the face. I get warm. This is uh, your body reacting to a stressor. Uh, this, luckily, is usually short-term stress. Either you get pulled over or the cop doesn't bother you. Um, but this is your... This just shows you the reaction that your body has to a stressor. Your blood pressure will increase. Your heart will start to race. This all relates back to um, us and our primitive cells. When we were hunter-gatherers and we used to see, um, we used to have to kill, uh, to kill animals or to hunt animals, but we were at the same time being hunted by them. We had to decide if we wanted uh, to run away uh, so it gets into that fight or flight, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Like I said, stress can be positive, and a lot of times acute stress is positive. Uh, this is the most common stress that we have. We have it daily. WebEx isn't working. A call-in number is wrong, or we're late for a meeting. The problem is what we're seeing, what we're all kind of living through now is um, chronic stress. Chronic stress is stress that lasts for a longer period of time. You can have chronic stress if you have money problems, you're unhappy at work, or you're living through a global pandemic. 
any type of stress that goes on for weeks or months is considered chronic stress. You can become so used to chronic stress that you don't realize that it's a problem. And if you don't find ways to manage it, it can lead to more health problems. When we have long-term stress, this becomes an emotional pressure. And the individual usually feels like they have little or no control. Because of this, they end up having more stress. Um, there is an association when people have had or been through traumatic events, such as we're going through now, there is a higher, um, there is an increased prevalence or an increased number of people going through chronic stress. I think right now, um, mental health experts are saying nine out of 10 people are claiming that the pandemic has caused chronic stress in them enough to um, result in some kind of physical manifestation. We talked about the fight or flight um, before with the acute stress. So our blood pressure increases, our heart, our heart starts to race. Those are all things that are, we're trying to get our body to either fight or we're trying to get our body to run away. The reason for this um, is because when you have a stressor and uh, when you come in contact with something that can be considered um, something to cause stress, your body starts to release corticosteroids. When it releases corticosteroids, it also releases norepinephrine and epinephrine. All these chemicals go to help you be able to run faster or to fight harder. The problem is, is when we have chronic stress, our body can't differentiate between, oh, we, are, we see a snake, we need to run away, and oh, I'm going through this global pandemic and I, I don't know how to handle it. Our, our brain can't differentiate that. It just sees every stressor as the same. So if we are continually in a, in a state of stress, our body is releasing more corticosteroids and norepinephrine, and this can build up over time. The problem is when it builds up over time, that means that you have a high blood pressure for longer periods of time. High blood pressure can lead to stroke. When we talk about our heart, our heart starting to, our heart rate starting to increase, um, this actually can create damage to our heart muscle because we've got an increased heart rate. Um, the, cor the corticosteroids and norepinephrine in general, the chemicals released, they do cause damage to all muscles, including the heart muscle. So there's increased risk of heart attack because of stress. It can also affect um, growth in children. So this is something that we need to consider for our kids. The biggest thing that we need to consider right now is stress actually suppresses the immune system. People that reported that they were um, having increased stress, vac the, flu vaccine is le the flu vaccine has found to be less effective in them and they're more apt to get the flu. So there are studies out there that show that um, the, the corticosteroids and the norepinephrine that we release in our body actually suppresses our immune system. And when you, if you think about it, when you're on steroids for uh, medical treatment or anything, uh, it does wipe out your immune system. So there's always that uh, worry that when you're on a corticoste when you're on a, a steroid for some kind of medical treatment, they usually try to keep you isolated. Um, stress does cause anxiety and depression. Um, the more that we come in contact, the more that we have the stress and the longer that it goes, the greater the risk that it does become, become anxiety because we just can't remove that stressor. Uh, it can cause headaches, sleep problems, concentration problems, and it can cause weight gain. So, we looked at some of the physical manifestations that stress can cause. We, I wanna go over the symptoms and I want you to be aware of these symptoms, not just for yourself, but for people that you live with or people that you work with. It's really important to remember some of these changes. You can have change in bowel habits. Um, this means going to the bathroom more frequently or less frequently, both can occur. Uh, you will have trouble sleeping. And the problem is, is that makes stress worse because if we can get more sleep, usually our body's better at fighting stress and is also better, um, sleep is really good for our immune system. You can have an upset stomach. Increased use of drugs or alcohol is a symptom of, um, 
of too much stress. Changes in weight, people can either lose weight because they're too stressed to eat or they can gain weight. Um, this is usually an, an indicator that somebody else might have problems with stress, especially if there's no other reason that this person has gained weight or lost weight. So look for that. I know with the holiday season, it's really hard to tell, are people just gaining weight because they're stressed or is it just all the holiday food? Um, forgetfulness is something else. So if somebody is forgetting things a lot, uh, and I know that I've, I've noticed that I'm more apt to forget things the longer this things, the longer that this occurs, just because we're dealing with stress because our minds never in the present moment, it's thinking about a whole bunch of other things, uh, being tired and inability to concentrate. So when we talk about stress, you can talk about acute and chronic, but you can also just talk about routine change and stress um, as it's related to a traumatic event. So when we talk about routine stress, this is just stress that we see every day. So getting the kids ready for school, uh, getting to work on time, this is routine stress. And this would be acute stress because it's, it's something that our body's used to. Um, we're used to facing it every day and it's usually not a big deal. There are major changes in life that can cause, uh, that is associated with increased stress. These include change in marital status, life of somebody, uh, so birth, uh, death of somebody close to you, um, loss of a job, gaining a job, or the biggest stressor um, as uh, the United the United States has been pulled and recently the biggest stressor has been identified, not death of somebody, but moving. Moving is actually a really big stressor, uh, which is a big change from what it has been before. Um, traumatic events, traumatic events can, uh, they can be associated with a major accident. They can be associated with death, death of somebody close to you, especially if it was quick. Uh, living through this pandemic has been uh, classified as a traumatic event as well. So we're also going to take a little bit of time just to look at the stress curve. Um, we can see that our performance, our performance increases to a point, and then we get to a point of fatigue in the middle. And this relates to the level of stress. So optimum amount of stress might make us do really well. So this is with acute stress. So if we have to run a race or we have to turn in a test, this is an optimum amount of stress to allow us to perform at our best. The problem is we can only perform at our best for a certain amount of time. And then we go into fatigue and exhaustion. This relates to the stress being a lot around too long or too much stress and we go into overload. We see that as we continue through the curve, our performance starts to go down and we get into exhaustion, anxiety, panic, and anger. And then we just get into a total breakdown or a shutdown. So, the first thing that we need to talk about in terms of uh, how to manage our stress is the feelings that we might be experiencing. It's okay right now to have any feeling. You can be sad, you can feel guilty, loneliness, isolation, fear, confusion, panic. Any of those feelings are okay to have. They're normal right now because as human beings, we're going through so many changes and it's, it's hard for us to process it right now. It's okay to have these feelings. Um, people are all experiencing similar feelings right now too. So it's important to have this in our back of our mind. We don't know where anybody's coming from right now. They could have had a family member die. Their entire family could be um, in quarantine because of COVID. They could have lost their job. So it's really important to have some compassion for ourselves and others because it does help us reduce stress in the long run. So I'm going to talk, give you a few tips about um, how to manage stress. The first thing that you need to do is to be observant. We talked about some of the symptoms and some of the physical effects that stress can cause. It's important for you to remember those and look at yourself and also look at others. If they're starting to have some of these signs of stress or you're starting to have some of these signs of stress, 
you need to try to either manage it or if you think it's too much, you, you should talk to your provider. Our providers don't frequently ask us our, about our mental well-being, so it's really important for us to take that first step and just say, hey, I think I might be a little bit more stressed than I should be right now. If you have an underlying medical condition, we call them comorbidities, such as high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, it's more important for you to talk to your provider because when you have these underlying medical conditions, stress can actually impact you more. Your risk of heart attack, stroke, and the negative impacts of stress are increased um, as opposed to a, somebody without these comorbidities. So I'm a health and wellness person and I will tell you that, so my, and we'll talk about self-care in a little bit. My self-care is I have to exercise for, uh, I have to do some kind of in high intensity cardio for about 50 to 60 minutes a day. And honestly, the reason I do this is so I, I, I don't, it's because of stress, especially right now. It's really helped me to manage stress. Um, it helps me sleep better. Um, it does boost your mood. So you know how we talked about those corticosteroids and those negative chemicals that can get released over time and we have stress? When you exercise, your body releases dopamine and endorphins. These are feel-good chemicals. They help to negate some of the bad chemicals that are released from stress. So getting any kind of regular exercise is really important. Um, I think it's helped save everybody else in my household from me too. So I'm just going to put that out there. When we do regular exercise, we do sleep better. So if you're not, if, if you're not getting regular exercise now, try to at least start with walking around your house or getting outside and walking for 10 minutes a day. Do that for a few days and then start to increase it. Don't start out thinking I'm going to exercise every day for for an hour. You're going to end up not doing that. And then you're going to end up feeling stressed and defeated and um, mad at yourself. So it's, it's really important that you just try to start little and then build up. There's a lot of relaxing activities um, that can also help manage stress. The good thing is there are tons of apps right now that are free um, on smartphones for any of these. And they only take a minute some can take up to five minutes, but if you just spend a minute or five minutes a day, these apps can kind of help you manage your stress. There's relax, the relaxing activities include meditation, breathing exercises, and mindfulness. And we'll talk about mindfulness a little later because mindfulness, just like those endorphins and dopamine, can have um, really good effects on how you um, react to stress. Okay, so eating healthy is also important. Uh, eating more fruits and vegetables, I know that it's hard, but the more fruits and vegetables you eat, they have good chemicals, just like those endorphins and dopamines that negate all the bad side effects of the stress. There's antioxidants in them and there's a, there's, they're full of more nutrients. So they, they do help to negate some of the bad physical things that can happen from too much stress. Um, it's important to try to cook at home and eat there when we can. I know that it's not always everybody's first choice because you have to clean up and, um, but the more that we eat at home, the better quality the food is. Uh, so it's very important to try to eat healthy at home. Sleeping well is one of the best things that we can do for ourselves, both for our immune system right now and uh, for stress. Uh, best way to improve sleep if you're having problems improve if you're having problems with sleep is to develop to develop a sleep routine when we develop a sleep routine what we do is train our bodies and our minds that it's time for us to start to key down and to, to go to sleep it's recommended that you start the sleep routine about 60 minutes before you go to bed this sleep routine should not include electronic devices. Electronic devices, actually, they all let out blue light. Blue
Sorry about that. That was my dog. Sorry. I actually thought that was I, Renee's dog for a second. No, so. sorry. <laughs> sorry. I got, I got I think we have her under control. I don't know though. <laughs> she might bark again. So it just made me stress. That's all. Um, anyway, so uh, blue light actually starts to activate your brain more and it keeps your brain up. So it's really important to try to stop the electronics before, before you try to go to sleep. You should also try to keep your bedroom just for sleeping. Um, it's important to try to not work from your bedroom uh, and do any kind of like crafts or wrapping presents because when we try to go to sleep at night, our mind, end up, our mind ends up thinking about the things because you'll look at your desk and you'll think, oh, I have to finish that work or you'll, you'll look at the presents. Oh, I have to finish wrapping this presents. So it's really important to try to keep a um, room just for sleeping. We should also try to set goals. I have a set, we should also try to set goals and priorities. It's really hard sometimes for us to say no, um, but it's really important right now to not, to not stress ourselves out and not um, spend too much, not over, overspend ourselves. Um, at the end of the day, it's also really important to note what you've accomplished. I know that we all have to-do lists and we might not all get these done. So it's really important to note at the end of the day, not what you didn't accomplish, but what you did accomplish. One way to help with a to-do list is to prioritize the to-do list. So it, everything that has to get done, I have to take the dog to the vet, has to be an A. Things that it would be nice to get done, I should wrap seven Christmas presents, should be a B. Things that don't have to really get done, I should vacuum the house, should just be a C. If we prioritize, by the end of the day, if we've gotten all those A's done, we end up feeling better about ourselves. We should also try to stay connected as much as possible. This includes virtual meetings when we can. Uh, there's also a lot of community groups right now and um, social groups that are holding uh, virtual meetings. So if we can, it's really important to try to stay connected. We also need to try to think positive. Um, we have to accept things that we can't control and we should, should write our feelings down if we can because that helps us accept our feelings and it moves us in the right direction and celebrate the small stuff. So I'm going to go over a toolkit. The toolkit is uh, four A's. A lot of times with stress, we can either avoid it, alter it, accept it, um, or adapt to it. When we avoid stress, it means that we have to try to take control of our surroundings. So an example of this would be we are late to work every day. If we move, if we leave earlier five minutes or if we ask our boss if we can arrive 10 minutes later due to traffic uh, this is us avoiding 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 that stress we also like i said need to learn to when to say no and ditch the list when we can the prioritization the to-do list the next thing is alter. We can, if we can't avoid a situation or we can't avoid the stress, we need to alter it. We have to ask for a change in either people or our surroundings. We need to communicate our feelings. And when we do this, we have to use I statements. So if we're having problems getting our work done, instead of going to our, um, our employer and saying, hey, this, this is just not manageable. We need to say, I'm feeling frustrated because I can't get my work done. Is there anything we can do? If we use the I statement, it personalizes it and it allows the other people, the other person not to take offense to it. We can also manage our time better. A good tip for this is to take um, everything similar in the day and lump it together. So if we've got to call a bunch of people and we and we also have to do data entry try to call everybody at one time and then try to do data entry later we end up saving minutes in the day which can help we should also set limits in advance so if we have to leave a meeting at nine o'clock it's important to tell everybody in advance so then you're not stressed that the meeting goes over
if we can't avoid or alter, we have to accept. Sometimes there's nothing else we can do but just to accept the change and the stress that's occurring. If we, if we do accept it, one of the best things that we can do is to talk to somebody. This includes talking, talking to an employee if you think that they're feeling stressed or talk to a friend, reach out virtually. Um, it's really important to get our feelings out and talk to somebody. This helps us because they can also help to put things into a different perspective for us. We also need to forgive. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort to be angry with somebody. So if we learn to forgive, then we end up, we end up not stressing about it as much. Positive self-talk is just being okay when we've made mistakes. So you could say, hey, I know that I was, uh, I know I got to work late today, but I know I'm gonna do better tomorrow and I'm gonna try better. This is taking a bad situation and making you feel okay with it. This, we should also try to learn from our mistakes. So the final A is adapt. We need to adjust our standards. Sometimes we just can't, sometimes things just aren't gonna be perfect. This is really important right now as we go into the holiday season because things are not gonna be perfect. Um, thought stopping is when we have a gloomy or a negative thought, we need to learn to stop it because this can help us to reduce stress. We also need to rethink the issue. Sometimes the issue isn't, a, isn't as big of a deal as we think it is. So if we rethink the issue, we, re, we can reframe things and then realize that it's not, it's not as big of a deal and it doesn't make as much of an impact. Adopting a mantra is just when we say something, I can get through this, I can get through this. Sometimes that can help because it tells our, it, it's actually just us talking to ourselves and telling our brain, hey, it's okay, I can do this. When we talk about creating an assets column, this is when we take everything that's positive on our lives and we think about them when we're stressed. So if the dogs make us happy or gardening makes us happy or, or our kids make us happy or travel makes us happy, think about those things when we're stressed because then you're less likely to have a buildup of those negative stress hormones because you're thinking about positive things. Lastly, we need to look at the big picture. A lot of times when we think about a stressful event, try to think how you're going to feel about it in a year from now or five years from now. Most of the time, it's not going to matter, and you're going to look about. You're going to look back at this time, time, and think, "Why was I so stressed about the situation?" So, if we take a step back and look at it, look at the big picture, we can start to reframe how we feel about the current situation. So, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to just try to take a stressful situation that you're having right now, and see if you could accept, adapt, avoid, or alter anything and if it would help with your level of stress. Okay, we're going to spend, sorry, we're going to spend a little bit of time going over mindfulness. Mindfulness is just really the quality of being aware of you and your surroundings at this moment in time. We do not think about the future and we do not worry about the past. So it's really focusing on awareness and accepting whatever feelings we have right now. If you look at this picture, a dog is mindful because they just think about what we're doing right now. But the human on the same walk, his mind is full. And when our minds are full, we're, we're more apt to be stressed and to react to situations poorly. So we have to be aware of our thoughts. And when we practice mindfulness, we stop immediate reactions. So when we, when we come across a stressful situation, we need to take time and take a breath and stop our immediate reaction. When we do this, we start to retrain our body how it reacts to stress. If you practice mindfulness, and you have to practice it, it's not something that is innate to anybody. And you're, the more you practice it, the better you're going to get. 
but even those that have practiced it for years can still can still be stressed. But when we do practice mindfulness over a period of time, it reduces um, the size of the, the size of the amygdala, which is actually the part of the brain that responds to stress. So if we reduce the size of the amygdala, then our response to stress changes and we're more apt to be less stressed or not even be stressed to situations that used to stress us out. So if we can stop immediately and just look at how we're feeling and be in a being mode when we enter, when we encounter stress, then we can start to adapt the way our body reacts to stress. It's when we practice mindfulness, it does reduce brain activity in on top of reducing the amygdala, it does also reduce the brain act activity because it stops you from thinking about the future and the past and it puts you just in the present. It makes us better able to focus, which helps reduce the chances of accidents and um, also negative uh, physical consequences from stress. When we when we do practice mindfulness, we can we can do it. We can apply it to any part of our lives. So if we wake up mindfully, it's really just be. It's really just putting our feet on the ground, taking a moment to realize how we feel, and then moving on with our day. When we eat mindfully, it's just taking a piece, a grape or a piece of chocolate, just something, and looking at it, feeling it, putting it in our mouth, and really thinking about that piece of chocolate or that grape. Taking a mindful pause throughout the day is just to be aware of where you are at this moment in time, not think about the future and not think about the past. A mindful workout is just when we do work out, be mindful of how our body feels and how it moves and um, any, any reactions that we might be having. Um, when we do mindful workouts, we're more apt to to determine if we have an injury or notice things sooner. Um, I am really bad at uh, spacing out when I drive sometimes. Mindful driving is just being present when you're driving all the time and concentrating on the road in front of you. Uh, mindful driving is actually really important and has been shown to reduce uh, chances of accidents. So there's a lot of mindful activities that you can do, yawning and stretching, three hugs and three breaths, uh, mindful eating, like we talked about. Uh, you can clench all your muscles up for 30 seconds and then just take some deep breaths. You can breathe for a minute. Um, aspirations are a type of mindfulness. And then thinking about ourselves in a positive light. So thinking about things that we love our, about ourselves and ways that we've been kind are all mindful acts that we can do throughout the day. And they usually don't take that much time. There are apps available on your phone for mindfulness uh, if this is something that you'd like to start practicing. So when we're talking about health and wellness at home, um, if these are things that we can do to help reduce our stress. So if we create if we create or replace routines that have been lost if we replace routines that have been lost by creating new ones this um, helps us manage stress because it helps us mitigate any um, problems or situations that might occur during the day we need to take time to disconnect it is very hard right now to disconnect from our phones and from our computers because we're constantly on them with this virtual world that we live in but it's really important for us to take time to disconnect um, we have to accept our negative emotions, like we talked about earlier. Schedule self-care. Self-care is could just be five minutes a day, and anything that makes you happy. This could be dancing, gardening, exercise, walking the dogs, even taking a nap. If that's what you think you need, schedule a nap for yourself. But it's important to do at least one thing for yourself every day. It's also important that you're not available by phone, People can't reach you if you don't want to be reached. So schedule it, put it on your calendar, and make sure you do it. It's also time to play. Um, we talked, uh, 
laughing and playing, it, those are all ways that we can increase the endorphins and the dopamines in our system, which help ne negate all the bad impacts from stress. So it's important right now to take time to play even board games, play outside if you can, and take time to laugh because all these have great effects on your mental health and well-being. Um, we talked about these, we talked about a lot of these earlier two things that I would like to say is you should also really reduce your exposure to social media. There are so many differing opinions right now. We don't know what's true and what's false. So the more that you can reduce your exposure to social media right now, the better off and the less stressed you'll be. We should also try to avoid complaining and gossiping. When we do this, we just invite criticism and unwanted advice and this increases those negative stress hormones that we talked about earlier. So try just to avoid complaining or gossiping. It's not good for anything. Uh, more tips for teleworking is try to have a morning routine. If, more, if a lot of people are working from home or at school virtually, make sure that everybody's aware of everybody's schedule because um, it just helps it helps to make sure that there's no problems throughout the day. And engage when video by you can, while you invade, engage by video when you can. Schedule breaks throughout the day. Sometimes I sit at my computer and I realize that I sat there for three hours. That's not good and it's not healthy. So put it on your calendar, because if it's on your calendar, there's a better chance that it'll get done. Um, you'll get a reminder that says, hey, get up, move, stretch. But it's really important that we schedule those breaks, not just to get up and move physically for our body, but it's also important for our mind because when we come back, we're probably better able to focus. If you can, get outside or at least leave your office space throughout the day. It gives us a different picture and it, ge it gives us a different perspective of things if we can kind of move around throughout the day. Have a firm quitting time. I'm very bad at this. The computer's here, the email's here, I can just keep going, but it's really important that we have a firm quitting time. Everybody needs downtime because the more that we push ourselves, the worse our performance is gonna get. Like we talked about before, office space should be your office space. You should only work from this space. Try to have the rest of your house remain free from work or, and whenever possible, don't work within your bedroom. When you can, share your thoughts with coworkers. Also take time to reach out to coworkers. If you're having a meeting, the first five, 10 minutes of the meeting should, hey, should be, hey, how's everybody feeling? How's everybody doing? Just do a check-in. Just, just starting that conversation is one of the best things that you can do. Okay, these are all hyperlinked. So if you, I will be sending the, the um, PowerPoint out and it'll be sent out to everybody, but you can, click here and it'll take you to resources for mental health um, about traumatic events, stress management. Um, these are all uh, hyperlinked to resources for eating better, sleeping better, uh, exercising more, and mindfulness as well. This is my contact information and I am finished. Are there any questions? Yeah, we've got a lot of questions that came in. So thank you very much. That was wonderful. I feel myself like breathing more just listening to you. Good. Um, <laughs> good. I'm glad. That's good. Good. That's yeah. that. Yeah. Um. So we had some questions that came in. Um. How long can the um changes in a person's life affect a person's stress level? Like you said, moving is one of the biggest ones. Like how long? And I know that people are different. Um. How do you address that? Um, people are different. So it really just depends on the person's ability to cope with stress. Um, and it, it honestly depends on the person's health beginning, how, how healthy they are. The healthier we are, the easier it is for our body to come back from stress. Um, the problem is people might experience anxiety, even though the, even though the move is removed so some the stress is moving so you remove that stress you've moved but somebody could still have anxiety so it, it's really dependent on the person's ability to cope their ability to manage stress um, and how they look at stress and their body's response to stress so you can have negative 
when we talk about traumatic events, these are all, these can be, um, you watch somebody die, somebody in your house went to jail. These traumatic events can actually impact you for the rest of your life. So there's a lot of studies out there where they look at the effects of adverse childhood experiences that are associated with these traumatic events, and they've linked it to a whole bunch of chronic issues later in life. So children don't have this ability to cope, which makes them very vulnerable. And so because of that, the impacts of stress will end up following them throughout life. Does that answer the question at all? It's, it's, it's really based on the individual. I'm having stress of my puppy yes. is trying to like come and eat treats. And I'm like, okay, you've got to get down, buddy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> um, and Dr. The, Kristen, wait. I want to, can I jump in just real quick? There was some of the research you talked about was amazing. A couple of years ago work, we went through some things and uh, one of our directors presented some information that even the stress of a mother, when we're in yeah. our mother's womb can determine yeah. It's, Chronic illnesses, yes. heart so, disease in our 50s. Correct. Correct. Yes. So that's I, actually my dissertation to get a PhD was adverse childhood experiences uh, experienced by a mother and the impacts that it had on low, ber low birth weights and poor poor birth outcomes. But if the mom is, if the mom is stressed and it's not acute stress, it's the, the chronic stress, the stress that they're feeling all the time. But if the mom has chronic stress, the child can start to be diabetic because they produce more insulin before they're even born. And they can also start to have lesions within their um, cardiovascular system, which those are like, they, they predispose you to getting um, cardiovascular disease when you get older. So yes, our, unfortunately, our health and our wellness is impacted before we're even born. It is on the hour. So, uh, so I know that my Christmas music is playing uh, and uh, I know maybe we'll lose some people, but we had some more questions. Um, so if you don't mind sticking around to answer some questions, nope. that'd, be, nope. that'd be great. Um, so how do blue light filters on phones, do, do those help and are you familiar they with They do. Them? Yes, they do help. Um, and you can actually have your glasses, your glasses, my glasses that I wear have a blue light filter on it and it stops the blue light from coming in. There are filters that you can get on your phone that work the same. Uh, they work really well in children too. Uh, children are more impacted by blue light. It keeps their mind more active. Um, but these filters, they do work. They just stop that light um, from, entering, from entering our brains and keeping our brains active. That's fantastic information. Yeah, I didn't know there was a thing for glasses. Yes, yes. Um, we had uh, a couple other questions. How important is it for employers to talk to their employees about stress this time of year, especially? It's very important. Um, and because the, if one of your employees is stressed and something bad happens, it's going to impact all of the rest of your employees. It'll impact performance. There's a greater chance of accidents. There's a greater chance of um, all kinds of chronic illnesses that are associated with stress. It is very important for employers to reach out, especially right now, because we don't know what anybody is going through. We don't know what anybody's life is like. And to just check in with employees. The best tip that I can give is whenever we're um, having a meeting, start the meeting off with, hey, how are you guys doing? I really want to hear how you're doing because that starts the talk. And if you make mental health, there's a lot of stigma associated with it. And it, the more we can make people comfortable with talking about things, the better off everybody is. And so to do that, the first thing is just to, is for employers to start the conversation. Hey, how are you, do, how are you doing? What's, I'm going to try to, yeah. Hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Like, is there anything that I can help with? Yeah, that's a great, uh, great tip too. Um, can chronic stress slow down or hinder the body from healing itself, making it harder to return to work? 
Um, yes. For an injury. Yes, it can. Um, so when we talk about chronic stress, it does impact our blood pressure. It, impl- it impacts our heart rate. It impl- so when it impacts our blood pressure, it constricts our um, blood vessels. When our blood vessels are constricted, then the blood can't flow, our body can't heal right, and those corticosteroids can also damage muscles. So it will take a lot longer to heal if our body is under stress. Okay. Um, I saw on your list, uh, said three hugs and three breaths. Was that a pre-COVID exercise? No, sorry, you you give yourself (laughs) three hugs. So you give yourself three hugs because you kind of stretch. So yeah, it's definitely COVID safe. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> what if good. you can't reach your arms around yourself? Is that, <laughs> well, uh, just maybe a source of stress for myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we had a, a couple of uh, suggestions or, or things um, from people that were in the in the participation, um, and they said uh, holidays, um, doing virtual planning and trying to eat via camera has become a stressor. So the holidays are you know, maybe even worse than normal, so. No, the holidays are worse than normal, and we're all facing change. Uh, The CDC does have a website about how to handle stress this year during the pandemic, and also offers alternate plans and things that you can do. One of the best things I can tell you about the holidays is don't expect it to be like every other holiday. Just let it go. Just be happy that everybody's still here, that's here. And the second thing is um, to cope ahead and to plan ahead. And by that, I mean, start having conversations now and thinking now about like what Christmas and New Year's should be. Because if we can start to talk to people, then maybe we're not going to have as many, um, we won't have as many confrontations. People might be more accepting. So, but definitely the, there are a lot of resources out there on holidays and the pandemic and stress. Yeah, cool. Good. Yeah, yeah. we, I just want to throw out to, to Renee that we, as a safety council, have been trying to produce a lot of resources uh, from local counselors and uh, business leaders and different things. We did put one off on, and sometimes we'll record for an hour and it can get, the good information can get lost in that. So I've been breaking some of those up. We just put one how to handle or dealing with others during the holidays. Uh, and that doesn't mean you invite a bunch of people over that could be your immediate family where they talk about Gen Z, how to listen, these different things, and really kind of like how to re- respond rightly. Mm-hmm. So keep an eye out in our newsletters and stuff. Those are really good in our podcast and uh, vid- some of the videos we're doing. So we're trying hard to get that out there. There are many more other sources than us. Um, Dr. Kristen and I actually will be doing a follow up interview on Monday. And uh, look for that because we're, she's going to give us a whole hour we're setting apart for that, right? For like an interview to, we might not take that long. So I don't, I don't want to cause doctor uh, any more stress, but, <laughs> but, but we're going to do an interview on how to handle the stress during the holidays. So I'll probably be emailing that out next week, latest uh, the Monday before Christmas. So look out that because just, we don't have enough time, obviously. Like today we're running over to the cover. There's so much stuff. And so we try to do that with these other interviews through our podcast and through our new YouTube channel. So look forward to that too. Great. That's all the questions that I've got. I know we're a little bit over, but I think uh, we had a lot of people stay. So it's an important topic. Yes, especially right now. Um, I, I will make sure, Mike, that you get the presentation. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so it literally – we surveyed our members and there is a YouTube video that we've sent out. It's on the podcast now and it's titled how stressed are your employees? We go over a survey that we did. It was around Halloween just before the election. So it may, the numbers may have been a little bit higher than, I don't know, cause the election's still going on for some people. So um, we, we don't know how that's going to end up, but anyways, so it's probably still a stressor. And so here's the thing though, the third top stressor at the time, the first one is obviously the pandemic. Number two is politics, but third was stress or pressure at work. So while there's a pandemic and election and civil unrest going on, the work is still in the top three of the stressors that we're seeing. That's even way above loneliness. That's even yeah. above fear of losing jobs. So there, so it is, it's not just external things going on in society. It's still things going on in the workplace. 
So right. I just wanted to well, bring that up. Things have changed at work. People are yes. doing stuff, have to do virtual, they have to wear masks, they have to wipe things down. Like there's a bunch of changes and there's a lot more work at work. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Is there any more questions, Renee, or no, that's it? So thank you, everybody. Thanks for staying over. Uh, Dr. Kristen, that was amazing. Thank you so much. I just want to tell you before we leave, our next meeting is going to be January 14th, and it's going to be how to combat fatigue in the workplace. Uh, you know, fatigue and stress are really related, but it does go in a different angle. And it, the speaker is going to be Dr. Bruce Hensley from St. Vincent Charity Hospital. So that's another good one. And uh, we'll see you all. If we don't see you, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. Be jolly, get fat, eating cookies, and start your diet back on the first. All right? Everybody out there, have a good day. Have a good one.